Hello friends, welcome to Saturdays with Steph, live at five every Saturday right here on my channel, almost every Saturday. <laughs> As you guys know, I missed last Saturday because I was out of town. Um, unfortunately, I did put up a little video uh, about the Soya Retreat, so I hope you enjoyed that. This week, which is October 21st, this is also not a live like my typical, but um, I am right here with you in the chat. This is what's called a premiere. So I did film this ahead of time, but I'm here in the chat with you. So if you have any questions along the way, if you need a link for something, put at Quilting with Stephanie Stitches. If you just start typing my name, it should pop up for you and ask me your question. That'll highlight it so I can see that you're asking me something. I'm happy to answer that. That's what I'm here for. I decided to film this ahead of time and do this as a premiere because my good friend, Stephen Bland of Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter did have his virtual quilting retreat today. I love his retreats, but usually at the end of the retreat, because it starts about eight o'clock in the morning and goes till 5 p.m., I'm tired. <laughs> um, I am an introvert and in everything that goes along with being an introvert, which I, and I am an, more of an outgoing introvert, I guess. Um, I do like people but my energy does get drained from being a lot around a lot of people and it's not anybody's fault that's just the way introverts get their energy extroverts get their energy from being in crowds and introverts get drained a little bit from being in crowds so that just means i need to be by myself or just quiet in my house with my family to re-energize so that's why i decided not to do a live today because the last couple times he had a virtual retreat I attended all day because they're lots of fun. And if you've never done one, he has one coming up in the spring, like he always does. And they're fabulous. So you need to attend one and they're free, <laughs> but I do get tired. And the last two times he had a retreat, I had to actually cancel my live because I was too tired. So that's why I filmed this ahead of time. Cause I figured I can sit on my couch and talk to you guys in the chat and don't have to be live. Okay. So today we are going to be sewing up this cute little triangle pouch. And this is using a charm, a mini charm pack from Moda and actually doesn't use the whole thing. If you don't know what a mini charm pack is, it's something that looks just like this. It's two and a half inch squares and the Moda ones have 42 squares in them. Um, I'm actually not sure if any other company makes the mini charm squares. They might. I know it started with Moda. You don't actually need 42. You only need 25 to make this bag. Then you'll need a fat quarter for the strap for the color around the zipper. You'll need it for the lining and also the binding, which makes this um, bag have no raw edges on the inside. This bag went together really, really fast for me. And so I'm really excited to share this with you and hope you guys enjoy this. You can grab the pattern down below in the description box, head on over to the pattern designers website. It's a small fee you pay. It's a PDF download. Definitely support your pattern designers. I didn't design this one, so I'm not going to be talking about necessarily the cuts or the sizes on the way because that wouldn't really be fair to the pattern designer, but I wanted to show you guys how to make this. Some of you out there will probably be able to figure it out without getting the pattern, but so definitely support your pattern designers. Um, that way they can keep making patterns for us. Uh, but I just thought that this was the cutest bag and I'm always looking for ways to use up my mini charm squares because I love them, but I have a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we've made the other boxy mini charm bag before. Um, so I thought I would show you guys how to do this one. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a zipper that's probably about 12 inches long. And then you're going to need some soft and stable or the Pelin craft foam that's like soft and stable. Or you can also use batting if you have batting. But if you use batting, it's not going to stand up like this guy does. Okay. Um, or if you have some interfacing like batting and you have some SF 101, by Pellin. You can use that and attach those together and that'll kind of give you, it won't be as soft like the soft and stable, but it'll give you the stand up effect like this. So if you don't have any soft and stable, but you have those two products that will work as well. You'll just fuse that 101 to your batting and then um, make the cuts per the instructions um, for the bag. So let's go ahead and get started on this. And like I said, along the way, feel free to ask me questions. Again, I'm not going to answer any uh, to the size of the cuts that I'm using just because it's not fair to the pattern designer, but anything else I would be happy to help you with. Um, but that's it. So let's get started on this cute little bag. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your mini charm pack. Now this isn't the one I'm using. This is just an example and a fat quarter. Again, not the one I'm using, just an example and get those together. You're going to want to pick 25, uh, two and a half inch squares from this charm pack that you like. 
And if you do not have a mini charm pack, you can cut 25 two and a half inch squares and scraps or whatever. This is a great scrap busting um, project. And then your fat quarter is what all the rest of your cuts are going to come from. So you're going to want to cut all the fabrics that you need, uh, which is listed in the pattern for this. And then you're going to take your five inch square or your two and a half inch squares, and you're going to sew them together in rows of five. So you're going to have five rows of five just like this, and you're going to sew them together offset. So every other row is going to shift and they're going to shift back and forth, kind of like you're laying bricks. So start by doing that and sew this together. And then you're going to get out of your fat quarter, your backing piece. So it needs to be, it's in the pattern, the instructions on what size it needs to be, but it definitely needs to be obviously larger than our front piece here. And I've got my soft and stable that's going to go in between. So that's cut a little bit bigger than those. I've got my zipper. This is a 12 inch zipper. I think the pattern says um, 16 inches or longer, although I think this is plenty. Um, and then you're also going to need three of these long strips. And then this one smaller strip. So three of these and then this one. And then we're going to press all these. So this is later on in the instructions, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm kind of going by the instructions, but kind of taking my own way too. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is press all these strips to get them out of the way. So you have three strips that are the same length, these longer strips here. And these are going to be the binding for the inside of your pouch. And they're also going to go around the outside of our zipper here. So you're going to have two on here like this. And then this one's going to be the binding for the inside of our pouch. So I've already pressed those. So go ahead and press all three of them right in half, just like this. So I'm going to just finger press it first. And then I'm going to hit it with the iron to keep it there. Now two strips over here, you're going to want to keep those just the length they are. And then this strip, this last strip, we're going to cut in half because this is going to become the inside of our bags binding. And you need one piece for each end of the bag. So you can measure it exactly, or you can do it my way <laughs> and you could just fold it in half. Find the center and then just snip it apart. Okay. It's not like baking. We don't have to be exact. All right. So there's that. Then the smaller piece, which is a little bit skinnier than those pieces were, slightly smaller width wise. Um, we're going to take and we're going to make it like bias tape. So you're going to fold it in half, iron it, and then you're going to fold those pieces in towards the, um, the part that you already ironed. So like the crease that you made when you ironed, fold them in and then bring it together and press again. So you enclose those raw edges. So I'm going to go ahead and put my iron on that. This is going to become the bag strap. So it should be like your skinniest piece of all these pieces. Cause you're folding it in half and then folding it in half again onto itself or inside itself to get rid of the raw edges. So all your raw edges are inside there. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to sew top stitch an eighth of an inch on both sides of that just to make it close it up and make it look all nice and pretty. Just to move that stuff out of the way. Put my scissors out of the way so I don't cut myself. I'm going to bring it over here to my sewing machine and just sew an eighth of an inch on either side of that strap. Okay, so that's all done. I'm just going to trim off these threads. Now you don't need to worry about the edges being open or raw because that part is going to get tucked into 
the seam of the bag when we close it up so that doesn't much matter hopefully you guys can see that the stitch lines on there okay I'm gonna get rid of all that all right I'm gonna set all these aside for now and I'm gonna grab my creation here <laughs> and I'm gonna grab my soft and stable and my backing piece so what I'm gonna do is you can base this any way you like but I like my 505 spray to baste so I'm gonna go ahead and baste this spraying on the interfacing now you can use batting if you don't have soft and stable Pellin also makes this kind of craft foam too, this thin craft foam. This will help your bag stand up more straight, but if you don't have this, that's okay. You can use regular batting. And if you've got regular batting and you don't have soft and stable, but you have something like SF101, just a lightweight interfacing, you can always attach that to your batting. Just to give the bag a little bit more shape, and that should help hold it up as well. So, because I know not everybody keeps soft and stable or craft foam in their stash at all times. I tend to because I really, really like soft and stable. So, I do usually keep some of it, at least a couple craft packages size of it around. If you're a soft and stable fan, they do make, do, they do make several different packages. You can get it in a couple yard package or you can get just a craft size, which... I can't remember the exact size, but it's like 30 something by 40 something, I think. Um, it's a great size to have around just to whip up a couple quick bags. Okay, so now that that's attached to the back, I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to attach this guy here. I can kind of see my fabric through this a little bit so I'm going to make sure if your soft and stable or your batting is larger than your backing piece make sure that this fabric gets on where it's going to have backing all the way around and no this isn't going to stay like this <laughs> after we quilt this we're going to trim this piece down so don't worry about anything not being perfectly lined up or anything like that right now Okay. I love 505. Everything just sticks so nicely. And the one thing I like about 505 too, if you've never used it, is that it's actually repositional. So you can pull this right back up again if you need to. So that's the great thing. It's not permanent. And it will wear off after a while. If you've ever basted a quilt at 505 and come back to it a few weeks later... Your basting is probably not stuck down as well as you thought it was. Okay, so now I'm going to take this whole thing over to my sewing machine and I'm going to turn my stitch length up and I'm just going to do some quick, probably, I was going to say stitch in the ditch, but since these are kind of offset like bricks, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just some lines all over this just to kind of hold it in place. So let's do that. I'm going to change my stitch length to more of a quilting stitch length, like 3.5 or so. All right. Let's see, what do I want to do? I think I'm just going to stitch in the ditch, actually. I think that'll work. I don't really want a whole lot of stitches showing. I just want to hold the bag together. But that's up to you. You can do a cross hatch, you can do meander, do whatever you like. I can't really do a whole lot of quilting in, in these seams going down just because they are, like I said, they're offset. So I think I'm just going to go back and forth here. That should be enough. It's 
so weird to do some big stitches like this because my machine, I'm so used to doing small stitches. Because <laughs> I sew with a pretty short stitch length. So to be doing these big giant quilting stitches is kind of funny. I did one, two, three. I have one more here to do in between these two. Then we're going to trim this down. Okay, there we go. And I'm not even going to stitch along the top and bottom edge here because we're going to trim this whole thing down. And I'm probably likely not going to catch that or it's going to, the stitches would be outside of where I trimmed. So I'm not going to waste my time doing that. And we're going to trim this down to, I'm going to grab my ruler here. If I can find it. There it is. We're going to trim this down to nine and a half by 10 and a quarter. And the 10 and a quarter is this direction. The nine and a half is the uneven brick sides. So let's see. I got my square ruler. That's nine and a half. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make sure on the nine and a half side that I'm catching. I'm definitely inside where this unevenness is on both sides. So that's what I'm doing first. So nine and a half, nine and a half. Looks like I've got... Move it over just a smidgen more. Okay, looks like I've caught all the fabric. Make it a little straighter here. Okay, I'm going to trim the sides. Or trim that side, I should say. Get that off, and I'm going to turn it around. And put the nine and a half inch mark on that side that I just trimmed. And if I did that right, yep, I just have this little bit here to make even. Okay, so now that's done. And the other direction, we're going to trim to ten and a quarter. So this ruler is a ten and a half inch ruler. And there's barely any hanging over there and there's just a smidge hanging over here so we're not going to trim a whole lot off of this but if I would have stitched along the edges it would have definitely taken off that so 10 and a quarter all right let's see trying to keep as much the fabric is even as possible it's not gonna be perfectly even but All right, that looks good. All right, I'm gonna trim this side. Turn this around. Find the 10 and a quarter on my ruler. Okay. And trim off that side. Okay. There we go. Now we've got a nice, pretty piece. All right. You can throw that scrap away. You're not going to need that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take, grab these. We're going to take two of these, oops, of these pieces that we ironed in half. And we're going to add those to this bag. We're going to add it to the wrong side first. Kind of like you're binding a quilt. So the raw edges are going to be up. We're going to stitch it here. And then we're going to flip it over. Just like you're binding a quilt. And we're going to stitch it, top stitch it to the front. Okay? On both sides. So I'm going to do that now. This is going to make for a nice finished looking piece. So the one thing I'm going to do is try to find the center of this. In the center of the bag just so I don't run out of fabric on either side. Okay. Right there it doesn't have to be exact. Okay. 
And don't forget to change your stitch length back from quilting to stitching. Six, a quarter inch. All the way down. And I would back stitch. I don't think it says if you have to or not. Let me see. Yeah, I don't see where it says you need to backstitch. It could. I'm looking at it really quickly. Um, but I'm going to just to hold it in place. Again, I'm going to find the center of this one. And the center of the bag. There we go. Now, being, me being who I am, <laughs> you guys don't have to do this extra step, but I'm going to press these so they lay better before I flip them over. So I'm going to, it doesn't say that in the instructions, but I'm going to go ahead and press these. Let me get that out of the way. Put the lid on the 505 so I don't spray myself. <laughs> All right. It just says to... Um, attach and then flip over and so on the other side but this is just me being extra <laughs> i'm allowed to be extra right all right okay so now we're gonna flip these flip this over and we're gonna flip this over to this side and we're gonna stitch a top stitch on this now you can make your top stitch the same length as your quilting stitches if you want or you can make it smaller whichever you like i think i'm gonna make it somewhere in between because i feel like that stitch i used for quilting was a little bit too big to actually secure this but i don't think it needs to be as small as my regular stitch And you're going to stitch this uh, about an eighth of an inch from the edge here. You could pin it in place if you feel more comfortable with that, but I'm just kind of folding it as I go over the edge and stitching. Seems to be going just fine. Again, I'm back stitching. It doesn't say to, but I just did. So, on the other side. So, I've got that side done. And so now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so I'm not going to edit this part out because I'm real. Somehow I caught the edge of this strip here and it flipped up on itself. So I'm going to pick these stitches out because I don't like the way that looks. And I'm going to fix that. Stuff happens, right? So I just picked that out a little bit. Somehow that flipped up and it caught so the bag was looking like that. So I'm just going to fix that. 
no big deal. I'll just back up a few stitches. Do a back stitch. And hold that guy down this time so he doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> there you go. All fixed. Okay. Everybody makes mistakes. Trim that thread. All right. So there's our bag. Outside and inside. Completely done. So now the next thing is, is we're going to install our zipper. So we're going to grab our zipper and we're going to top stitch this in place. And we're going to start with this side here. So where this little thing that you just basically, you kind of bound it, right? Put the binding right as close to the zipper as you can get without being on top of it, of course and center that as best you can leaving some zipper tape on either side so that's why you can see you kind of need like i said i think this was a 12 inch zipper it could have been a 14 though so um i think the pattern says 16. i don't think you need quite a 16 but i would get at least a 12 or a 14 so you have a little bit on either side okay i'm gonna take this over to my machine and i'm just gonna stitch right here as close to the zipper i can get without going on to the zipper now, you don't need a special foot. If you've got a narrow sewing foot, that would be good. If you do have a zipper foot though, go ahead and use it if you know how to use it. This machine does not have a zipper foot or at least it didn't come with one. Um, so I'm just gonna use my regular straight stitch foot. Now, when you sew the zipper on, you might want to go a little bit slower. I always go a little bit slower. And actually, I have to turn my machine down to make myself go slower. But I am going to go slower because I've got the one side of my narrow foot on top of the zipper. My needle's going through the part that's right next to the zipper. And I want to make sure that I don't get on top of the zipper at all. Because then I won't be able to open it. And I want to be able to open my bag. And actually, I went off the zipper just a smidgen right there. That's okay. I'm going to back up a little bit. So close with this eighth of an inch that and being on top of the zipper can happen. And I'm going to back stitch. And there we go. It's attached. Now looks pretty good so we're going to do the same thing for the other side so we can bring that around and do it that way or if you would prefer well it'd be kind of difficult to see what you're doing if you flip it that way so yeah bring it around and do it this way you may want to which i'm going to grab some wonder clips You may want to clip this in place just so your sides line up here because you don't want like one piece down here and one piece to end up here because then your bag is not going to go together right. So that's pretty close. Doesn't have to be perfect, just close. And you're going to want to actually unzip your bag. That'll make it easier. I'm going to put a few clips. Just don't cut anything off your zipper yet because you don't want your, um, you don't want your zipper pole to be coming off your bag. There's this, if you get a zipper, you should have a stop at either end, unless you have the zipper by the foot. 
which if you have that, if you're using zipper by the foot, you know how to put your poles on, so that shouldn't be a problem for you, but. Okay, yeah, I'm putting a lot, but that should help this to line up pretty well. All right, so I'm gonna start at this end, and I'm gonna do the same thing I just did and just sew down as close to the zipper as I can without sewing on it. And make sure that your bag, you're not sewing on any other parts of your bag. Like, don't get your bag from the other side underneath this. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I didn't do it this time, but I've done it before in other bags. So, then you have to just rip that out. Fun things that you learn along the way, right? I actually think that's good things to learn, though, because then you usually don't typically do those things again. That looks good okay so that's all taken care of make sure I can zip it all right that looks good let me cut off some of these loose threads we don't want that in there especially in the zipper that'll keep the zipper from functioning properly all right so after we've installed the zipper we're gonna go ahead and attach the loop And the loop is going to look like this one here. Let me move these wonder clips. It's going to look like this one here. So what we're going to do is, let me grab it. We're going to attach it to the outside. I know this sounds weird, but <laughs> we're going to attach it to the outside and we're going to go on either side of the zipper, just like this. Okay. You're just going to do about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And eventually we're going to turn this bag right sides out and we're going to sew this all together. So that's going to be caught in the seam allowance. So you won't see this, but just for now, just baste it to either side of the zipper, wherever you like it. I usually do it right past like the decorative part. So I did that here on this one. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to put one there and one there. Okay. Again, make sure you're not sewing your pouch shut at this time. Just catch that loop. Don't, don't get the bottom piece <laughs> underneath. Put that right down on there. Okay. And then... So I attach the one side. I'm just going to not worry about all this stuff right now and just go over here and do the same thing over here. The tricky thing is just getting all this stuff on the bag out of the way. And not sewing to the bottom of the bag or the other part of the bag. <laughs> Okay, that 
that's on, that's on. Good. All right. So that's done. So now we're going to turn this inside out. So now we need to have your zipper open a good part of the way because you want to be able to get your bag back out. <laughs> so just like that. And the side with your handle, make sure your handle is on the out in this case it's inside now but it'll it should be on the out what's going to be the outside of your bag so make sure you tuck that back out out to the outside because we don't want to sew that this way because then you won't have a handle on the outside of your bag so make sure it's tucked in there all right and then you're going to squeeze this bag together right here find the center And then you're going to stitch a quarter inch and actually it says a quarter in the instructions, but I'm pretty sure I did a half an inch cause I felt more comfortable with that, but whatever you're comfortable with, um, sew this bag shut, go right over the zipper. When you go over the zipper, you're going to go back and forth a couple of times to hold that in place. Um, but sew this bag shut flat on this end. Don't do anything on this end yet. Just the end with the pole. And I am going to do maybe not a whole half an inch, but larger than a quarter inch. Because I don't feel like a quarter inch is going to catch all this. So. You make that judgment for yourself. And I am back stitching at the beginning and the end of this. And go slow over your zipper. Back stitch over your zipper. I'm going to go all the way to the other end of your bag and back stitch. So you should have something that looks like crazy like this. Now you can cut all this extra off. Just take your scissors. Kind of hack all that off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these corners just a little bit. So when we turn our corners or we turn this bag, it doesn't have these big flappy corners and I'm going to cut the zipper down just a little bit because it's really bulky right there. Okay. I'm actually going to trim some of this excess away too since it did say a quarter inch. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I did a half inch last time and that might have been my binding still worked though, which is interesting because it's actually binding for a quarter inch. So, hmm. and it's going to look messy right now, but after we bind this, I promise it's not going to look messy. <laughs> all right. I'm going to throw all this junk away and this one, I'm going to go ahead before I sew this side shut and bind this side. I think that's going to be easier. The first one I did, they had you sew both sides shut first and then bind, but I just think it's going to be a little bit easier if I do this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to fold over just a tiny part right here, like it, not even a quarter of an inch, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to stitch this down so it has a nice smooth end. And I'm going to do the same thing on this end. This part is also not in the instructions, but I feel like it finishes it a little bit better. All right. Now making sure that it's closed, just like binding, just like before. We're going to put the raw edge to the raw edge of the bag and we're going to stitch a quarter inch right there.
I'm going to flip that over and then top stitch it on the other side just like we did for the zipper. Except this time I'm not going to iron it. I'm just going to go I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> I'm going to pull it over and we're going to top stitch it all the way down. So I'm going to kind of pull it over as I stitch it here. You're going to top stitch it about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So there's one side of our bag so that enclosed those raw edges. So no more raw edges on that side. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and instead of closing it flat this side of the bag what makes the triangle is that we're going to close it this way so before i do anything else what i'm going to do is i'm going to stitch across this zipper right here to hold that zipper together Okay, so I've sewn right across there. Now I'm gonna make sure that my zipper's open on the inside here so I can open or I can turn, turn this bag. So before we cut all this off, let's go ahead and sew this shut. So now we're gonna squeeze this together and we're gonna stitch the opposite way that we did this one. So this one we stitched this way, this one we're doing this way. And again, I'm not doing a half an inch, but I'm going to go more than a quarter inch. Uh, just to catch everything. And trim it down a little bit like I did on the other side. And when you get to the zipper, again, you might want to back stitch a few times. All right. So now... You can start to see it's looking like a triangle. Now I'm going to trim all this off. Gone. And again, the end a little bit without going through the stitches. There we go. All right. So the last thing we need to do on this now is bind this one just like we did the other side. And again, making sure the strip is long enough. Yep. I'm going to flip over just at the end just a little bit, like about an eighth of an inch or so, and stitch this down. Just so I don't have that raw edge. That bothers me. It might not bother you, and that's okay. And, like, that's the inside of the bags. So nobody's going to see it anyway, but I will know it's there. Again, that's my OCD. <laughs> you guys don't have to do that. All right, so again, with the raw edge open towards the raw edge of the bag right here, we're gonna stitch this on a quarter inch, and then we're gonna do the same thing, flip it over and top stitch. And I'm back stitching on both sides, on both ends, I should say. I'm going to flip that over and again stitch on this side so it's going to enclose all this open stuff from your like your soft and stable and all that. Back stitch on both ends and again an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, so 
that's the inside of our bag. All we have to do now is turn it right sides out. I'm going to grab hmm, something to turn this. Oh, there's my purple thing. So I'm going to grab that to turn this bag. Hopefully I did this right. I've got a handle <laughs> and a zipper that's correct. So just kind of poke those corners out as you go. You'll probably have to trim off threads, which I'm already seeing a few that I'm going to have to trim. Use my purple thing and poke out my corners a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go back and poke those out a little bit better later, but as you can see, I've got a finished bag. I'm gonna straighten all this out later. I'm straighten out my handle a little bit later, ironing it, but I've got a finished bag with finished seams. I just need to poke these corners out better. And there we go. Not too hard, and it's really, really cute. And there's my little Christmas bag. This actually is probably gonna be a gift for something. I'll probably put a gift inside um, and I've already got somebody in mind for this. So that's all there is. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Well, it wasn't really quick, but <laughs> shorter than one of my lives though, right? Uh, these bags are so much fun. They're sort of my new addiction and I'm quite sure there's going to be many more. Uh, one of the fun things you can do is add a little charm, which I did to this one. I haven't done it to this one yet, but it'll be coming. <laughs> to make these even fancier. Um, I really, really love the way that they turn out. I just think they're so cute. And um, the only thing I would do differently that I did from this one to this one is this one I used a buy any zipper. And this one I used a zipper that I got at So Yes Quilt Shop when I was out there for the retreat. And it wasn't as good of a zipper. It was not a buy any zipper. I, I don't even know what brand it was, kind of an off brand. Um, I feel like the zipper on this one came out a lot better and it looks a lot nicer. So definitely if you're going to make these and give them as gifts, I would make, I would get a little bit nicer of a zipper, um, or whatever you like, use whatever zipper you like, definitely. Uh, but it's not that bad. It turned out. Okay. I actually think I might give this one to my daughter because she really likes this fabric and then make another one for the person that I wanted to make it for with a little bit nicer of a zipper, just because we're all, you know, quilters, we're, we're a little hard on ourselves. We're picky about gifting and I want it to look as perfect as possible. <laughs> I know it's a gift, it's handmade, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to look a little bit nicer than this. So I'll probably give this to her and then make another one that looks more like this one. So I can definitely see some differences, but still, I like the way it looks. It's cute. They're fun. Um, great way to use up scraps. I think this is a great, great, great scrap buster. Um, I know a lot of you out there cut your scraps into little two and a half inch squares. So I think these would be really cute scrappy. And you guys know me, I'm not scrappy, but... I might attempt to do these in Scrappy. There's a few designers that I actually do keep scraps from. One of them's Corey Yoder, one of them's Lolo Boutique, and I'm starting to get a whole big bag full of those. So I'm actually thinking I might come pull some of those out and make a couple of these bags. So you guys might see me make, do something kind of scrappy here soon. Um, if I do, I will show them on my UFO whip update vlog, which I will have one of those out later this week. I didn't want to have one out this past week because I was at So Yeah. And the main thing I did there was a couple of their projects. And of course, the project that you guys picked for me for the 4S collab that you voted on, the puffins that are behind me. I know one of you is going to ask that's out there. Yes, that's the puffin quilt. It is done. All the puffins are done. They took a while. <laughs> we had four days to sew, sit and sew and do nothing else at the retreat. And the first three days I did puffins. Uh, the tiny puffins have some really teeny tiny little pieces in it, but after I got the puffins together, I will tell you that the stars and the rest of the pieces went together like that. So <laughs> this quilt really didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. So I've challenged myself. I know you guys picked the puffin quilt for me. I've challenged myself to do, to finish at least one of the other patterns and I'm going to pick it, um, that I had of the three patterns. So you'll see that sometime going forward. Um, I might be an overachiever and even try to do all three, but that might be pushing it. 
I definitely will try to get at least one more done. Uh, because I need something to sew with the other three S's because <laughs> we're all going to sew together in December. Um, but I really, really love this quilt. So for everybody who voted for the Puffin Star, this actually wasn't my first choice, but I'm so grateful that you did because I love it. It's so cute. Now all I have to do is quilt it and bind it and then work on one of the other patterns. And I already know which one it is, like I said, um, and my daughter actually picked it. So the other one. So I'm going to get that one done um, as well, or, or work on that one as well. And that's probably what you'll see me sewing in December when I sew with the other members of the 4S Club. So thank you all who, who everyone who voted on that. Um, but that's really all I've got. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tutorial. Go ahead and go download the pattern. Um, like I said, 25, two and a half inch squares and a fat quarter. Most of us have that in our stash. Uh, and then all you'll need is that interfacing and a zipper. And again, those are usually things that you have in your stash. And if you don't have the soft and stable, you can definitely use batting. Uh, and it's just a piece of scrap batting because you need about 13, 14 inch square. So enjoy and have a happy weekend. I'll be off the grid the next few days. It's my husband's, uh, mine and my husband's anniversary. So we are going to get off social media off phones, texting, and we're just going to enjoy each other's company. So I hope you have a great one and I will see you guys soon. Bye.